What's up, everybody? It's Blue Drake, and today we have a very, very special episode of World of Guns. We are going to be taking a look at the BMP3, talking about the history of it, how it's made, and how much ass it kicks. So, let's get straight in here, and we are going to start field stripping this puppy. Then we're going to completely disassemble it and fire off some rounds and see how it works in action. I hope you are as excited as I am. Let's get right to it. So here we are with the BMP3. We are going to start by removing only the most basic components. These are the components that would be removed if you only wanted to clean or perform basic maintenance on the vehicle. As you can see, the cannon, otherwise known as the combat module, takes up a very large portion of the interior space of the BMP. Additionally, the gunner and commander stations are attached to the combat module, so when the cannon rotates or traverses, not only does the gun move, but the gunner and commander stations move with it as a single unit. Now we're going to be removing the rear doors and hatches that allow passengers and infantry to enter and exit the vehicle. As you can see, without opening the top hatches, it's a very cramped crawl space to crawl through. However, the cool thing about this is that the rear doors actually have small gun ports you can fire an assault rifle through. So, an infantryman could lay down in that crawl space and defend the BMP without ever actually having to leave the vehicle. Now we're removing all of the armor components covering the primary engine block. And now we're going to remove the covers protecting the treads of the vehicle in case you ever needed to replace any of the wheels or the tread itself. And there we are. There is the BMP-3 field stripped for basic maintenance or repairs. Next, we are going to strip this down piece by piece to its factory components. So here we are getting ready to completely disassemble the BMP-3 down to its factory components. But before we do that, let's have a little bit of fun. The entire vehicle is modeled down to the nook and cranny, so let's zoom in here and get an inside look of how this vehicle looks without being fully dissembled. Look through all the little holes. Here we are. Here we are inside the BMP-3. Here's the, the gunner stations. You've also got the driver station up here, and to the left and right of the driver station, you have two secondary gunner stations. Uh, this is actually available in Project Reality when you play with this vehicle. You can get in the passenger seat and fire these two forward-mounted machine guns. And you have two seats here in the combat module. Let me select this uh, track here so I can actually see what I'm doing. And those have all the optics and controls that link to the combat module and the optics on the outside of it. So you can see here all these optic systems that are used to look outside of the tank. Now it looks as if the commander station is on the left side here and then the gunner station is on the right side here. The commander has these little viewports so he can actually look out and see physically what's happening and then the gunner has access to the gun sights to help him fire at enemy vehicles without exposing himself at all. Very, very cool. If only every game had this kind of detail for armored vehicles, right? Oh my gosh, would it be amazing? It would. It would be amazing. Oh, so beautiful. Think about how cool it would be if you had a game where not only could you have the inside of the vehicles, but you could move around inside the vehicles. You could just kind of crawl around through these compartments. If you, if you wanted to get out of the vehicle, you'd actually have to crawl through the back here and open up the rear compartments for the crawl spaces. That would be the coolest thing in the world. All right, so we've taken enough time. Let's just get straight to tearing this sucker all the way apart. Now, BMP in Russian actually stands for, and I'm going to say this wrong, but I'm going to try it anyways. Buivui Machine Pechote, which very literally means infantry fighting vehicle. And while the BMP is officially classed as an IFV, don't let that fool you, this thing can slaughter tanks. 
The BMP-3 is one of the most heavily armed infantry combat vehicles in service, period. Fitted with a low-velocity 2A70 100mm rifled gun, which can fire conventional shells or an anti-tank missile. With an additional 7.62mm PKT machine gun, coaxially mounted with 2,000 rounds, a dual-feed autocannon with 500 rounds of high-explosive and armor-piercing bullets, and gun ports that face in every rich direction that infantry can fire from, the BMP-3 is probably one of the most feared weapons in the Russian arsenal. The BMP-3 is not only offensively impressive, but also hosts a wide range of defenses to keep it from getting killed from enemy fire. As you noticed, we just removed the smoke launchers and infrared projectors. And while not shown here, the BMP-3 also has the ability to carry a Stora electro-optical jammer that disrupts anti-tank guided missiles, laser range finders, and target designators. The smoke screens are of course used to give the tank and its surrounding infantry visual cover. However, the infrared projectors can be used during night ops to illuminate the area in a way that only the BMP can see with its infrared vision. And this works very well since the BMP has incredibly state-of-the-art optical systems. In addition to standard infrared night vision, the BMP also has full thermal imaging meaning it can detect infantry, vehicles, and aircraft in complete darkness by their heat signatures alone. This gives the BMP a huge advantage in combat, especially against forces with less technological capability, such as terrorists and rebel groups. Now, the commander and gunner stations have a wide variety of optical, communication, and ballistic targeting computers to not only increase their situational awareness, but when they do detect a target, they can take it out with the first shot, meaning they have a considerable advantage not only in night operations, but also in surprise ambush scenarios. The gunner's ballistic computer not only takes into consideration range, but also crosswind, meaning that if there is a heavy storm, you're still going to hit your target no matter what. Not only is the ballistic computing and optical systems impressive, but all of the BMP's ammunition is automatically managed. The turret is fitted with a 2K23 system, which consists of an automatic loader, meaning that manually loading ammunition is no longer necessary. It's all done by an automated loading system. All of the 100mm shells, anti-tank missiles, and autocannon ammunition is stored beneath the gunner and commander. When the gunner needs to reload the cannon after firing, an automatic elevator goes below, picks up a round, and loads it into the cannon. This cuts out the need for having a designated loader, meaning the BMP can have a much more compact and sleek design. Tanks without an automatic loading system need to have much more space to accommodate an extra crewman, and having to make all the ammunition hand accessible can really screw with the design. So here we are, finally removing the main gun block from the armor shell. With it removed, you can clearly see all three weapon platforms in the same gun block. First, we're going to take off the barrel coupler and then remove the 2A72 30mm autocannon. Second, we're going to remove the PKT machine gun mounted to the left of the primary 100mm cannon. Lastly, we'll remove the rangefinder and leave the rest of the gun block intact. Now here, we get to take a closer look at and disassemble the automatic loader system that we were discussing earlier. While all of the ammunition actually available to the automatic loader sits in the combat module below the gunner and commander, there is a reserve ammunition stockpile in the rear of the BMP itself. So, if the automatic loader runs out of ammunition, you do have some ammo stockpiled in the back of the BMP that you can load manually in a pinch. Regardless, keeping all of the ammunition low and in the center of the BMP is the safest place for it to be stored. This keeps it safer from armor piercing and incendiary rounds, which would, if ignited, destroy the BMP immediately. Additional safety precautions to keep the engine or ammunition from igniting include a GO27 radiation and chemical agent detector and an automatic fire extinguisher. So, hopefully, even if the entire crew was somehow incapacitated during a fire, the fire extinguisher system would detect the fire and extinguish it before it causes any real damage or ignites the ammunition and destroys the BMP entirely. 
These bright red boxes at the bottom of the combat module is where all the ammunition is stored. And if you look, you can see the conveyor elevator system for the primary 100mm rounds right here to the back of the combat module, still standing. And here, at the very bottom of the combat module, you can see the rotating 100mm ammunition conveyor. Every time a round is loaded, the conveyor rotates, making a new 100mm round available to the conveyor system ready to be loaded. Finally, we'll be removing the hoist rail and click at the very bottom of the combat module. And that's it. We have now finally completely disassembled the combat module of the BMP. It's incredible how many pieces are just in the combat module of the BMP, but the combat module is debatably the most important part of the entire BMP itself. So let's move on to deconstructing the vehicle itself. First, we're going to be removing the armor protecting the fuel canister placed at the front of the BMP. This is an interesting place for the fuel canister since the engine is all the way in the back. But since the front of the BMP is the most protected and heavily armored part, it makes sense to put the vulnerable explosive liquid somewhere a little bit safer than the back. Now with the fuel canister out of the way, we can move on to removing all the accessories and additional armor plating bolted onto the outside of the BMP. Now, the BMP has a maximum armor thickness of about one and a half inches, enough to stop pretty much all small arm fire and even probably some smaller autocannon fire, but not enough to really stop any tank missiles or tank shells straight to the face. So while the BMP-3 is terrifying from an offensive standpoint, it can't really take much punishment from heavy enemy armor. However, if required, you can upgrade the BMP with reactive external armor, which would considerably increase its defensive capability. For those who have never heard of reactive armor, reactive armor is a module plate that you can install on the exterior of the BMP that houses explosives. Now, I know that sounds counterproductive, but it has been found that placing explosives on the outside of an armored vehicle and setting it off a split second before an enemy round impacts your vehicle, it drastically reduces the chance of the enemy round penetrating your armor. Essentially, the blast destroys both the round and its momentum before it's able to penetrate the armor at all. So now, since we've removed most of the armor, we're going to focus on taking out the hydraulics and steering systems of the BMP. The BMP weighs about 27 tons, but regardless of that, it's still an amphibious vehicle, meaning its mobility systems are very intricate. The BMP sports a four-speed hydromechanical transmission with independent suspension housing six hydraulic shock absorbers and a torsion bar. Steering is by gear differential with a hydrostatic drive and the track adjusting mechanism is remotely controlled from the driver's station with tension force indication. Granted, I have no idea what any of that means. I read it off Wikipedia, but it sounds goddamn impressive. Anyways, all you have to know is that it's awesome, and it's also amphibious, so it has water jets. And who doesn't like water jets? Water jets are goddamn amazing. And apparently, it can be modified to act as an amphibious vehicle and drive around in the water for up to eight hours. Which is insanity! I'm not sure if anybody would want to be in this thing for longer than eight hours. Anyways, but it can do it. So next, we're going to be disassembling the water protector and the bulldozer shield from the front of the BMP. The water shield keeps the water from coming over the front and flooding the compartment, and the bulldozer is just a bulldozer, because sometimes you just need a bulldozer. Next, we're going to be taking off the machine gun masks, which protects the gunners on the side of the BMP from getting shot to the little slits that they fire from. Then we're going to be removing the air panel, which helps keep everybody comfortable, because, you know, you need air conditioning. Then we have some bits and bobs, and these air tanks that you can use if the worst happens and the BMP sinks and you need some air. Or I guess if it just gets a little stuffy. Now we're taking out the seats where the left and right infantry gunners would be sitting. Next we'll be taking out the ammunition the gunners would be using, and a couple other little things. And finally, we have the PKT machine guns themselves.
Here we're going to be taking out some spare parts and a medical cabinet for emergency medical problems. Next we're looking at the water pumps, which you can use to get water out of the vehicle if it gets in. Some more spare parts, and the other PKT machine gun, which also has a shell tray below it, so when you fire it, the shells fall on something that you can easily collect after. Now we'll open the plant hatch, which will allow us to remove the air filtration system and its electric motor. Some more bits and bobs, spare parts, and jerry cans, which will house spare fuel if needed. Now here you can see us removing the periscopes. You've probably been seeing these all across the BMP. Now for those who don't know, periscopes such as these are standard for almost all modern armored vehicles. They work almost exactly the same as toy periscopes that kids play with, and they offer the crew and passengers a safe way to see what's going on outside the vehicle without risking themselves getting shot. And now we're back to removing spare parts and bits and bobs. So many bits and bobs, so many. As soon as we are done removing these last few jerry cans and jackets, we can move on to the engine, finally, and talk about the engine. However, until we get there, I guess this might not be a bad time to talk about the BMP's history and its service. The BMP was of course manufactured in Russia by a company called Kurgan Mashzavod, and I hope I said that right, but it's Russian. It's been in service since 1987 and is still actually in service today, since it's such a good infantry fighting vehicle. It was preceded by the BMP-2 and the BMP-1, which are incredibly prevalent in not just Russian military, but other militaries around the world, including Poland, Egypt, China, Afghanistan, India, all sorts of nations. Originally, the BMP-3 was intended to only have a single 30mm autocannon and twin Conquer anti-tank guided missile launchers. However, this was rejected, resulting in the weapon configuration you see here. In the BMP series, this was rather surprising, since the BMP-2 and the BMP-1 are considerably less armed. But by the time the BMP-3 was built, Russia needed something considerably more versatile and much less specialized. Post-1987, First World Conflict was practically unheard of, meaning that any combat Russia would see would be against armies considerably less technologically capable than themselves. Therefore, having a vehicle that was a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, became preferable, since versatility in a first world was becoming more of a strength and less of a weakness. But to hell with all that, we're finally at the engine where we get to look at the water jets. I love water jets. So anyways, the BMP-3 is powered by a diesel engine block. This is considerably less advanced than the crazy jet turbine borderline cold fusion shit that modern tanks do, but it gets the job done. Hence, it is Russian. The engine is classed as a UTD 29M diesel 500 horsepower engine, and it gives the BMP an operational range of about 600 kilometers. On the road, you can fly around 45 miles per hour, but in the water, it goes a measly 6.2. But that doesn't matter, right? Because it uses water jets. And water jets are damn cool. Am I right? Water jets. Things practically an armored jet ski. Hell yeah. Okay, yeah, honestly, that's that's pretty damn slow. But it doesn't matter because it goes in the water. And that's useful, right? Jack of all trades. Although, keep in mind, the vast majority of Russian's army is, in fact, amphibious. I'm not entirely sure why, because they are the largest land-based country in the entire world. You know what? I'm going to look that up right now. Okay, so apparently there is a lot of rivers and marshes and stuff on Russia's western borders, and the reason everything is amphibious is because it means that they don't have to rely on bridges, because back in the day, if you blew out a bridge, it would just stop an army, because they couldn't ford a river. But, I guess if all of Russia's stuff can ford rivers, it doesn't really matter, you can blow up all the bridges you want. So there, answer for that. Ooh, and perfect timing, yes, here are the water jets. WATER JETS! 
So it's always really, really cool because the diesel engine powers not only the treads and all that stuff, but it can switch over and power the water jets. So you can switch back and forth between amphibious and land base without having to do anything at all. You just plop yourself right inside the river and you can go zooming along. Or well, not zooming along because it doesn't go really fast. We covered that, but you can go at a walking pace. But that's good enough, I guess. It's good enough. So now that we are nearly done with cleaning out the engine block, all we have left after this is taking apart the treads and all the wheels and traction stuffies that go with it. So we have the last awesome little water jet propeller thingy here to take out, and then we are going to move ourselves right along. It's unfortunate that we weren't able to take the entire diesel engine apart piece by piece, but honestly, there's so many pieces with this already, I kind of am okay with not having to do that. Alright, there we go. Now we can finally move on to taking apart the treads. And then after this, we get to shoot some stuff up. I'm really excited for that. You guys should be really excited for that, because it's going to be awesome. Although, you're watching a video, so I guess if you really wanted to, you could just, you could just go to it and watch it right now. That's depressing. I have to wait and you guys could go right now. I have to take all these stupid little wheels off. Uh, every single wheel. Uh, oh, music shut off. No, come back music! Come back! Oh, there we go. So this is actually pretty cool. All these little shock absorbers, you can actually adjust the ride height of the BMP. So, if you wanted to, you could be like a BMP lowrider, and that would be awesome. It actually makes me wonder if you could drive this thing without treads, too. Just stick some rubber soles on it or something, just drive without the treads. Huh, that's gotta be possible. I wonder if there's a YouTube video of that somewhere. Okay, we're done with the left side. Time to move on to the right side. And then we're done! We're done! We've gotten the... We're almost there. 92 out of 717 parts. Oh my gosh. 17... Oh, wow. That is a lot of parts. 717 parts. I think we did the Colt, and it was like, what? Like, 40? That's insane! Not entirely sure why I took that first wheel all the way apart, and that's not taking apart the other wheels. But again, I think I'm okay with that. Which is also kind of intimidating because there are even more parts to this BMP than it is letting us take apart. Honestly, that engine back there, if we were able to take that engine completely apart, it would probably be more parts in that one engine than there are in the entirety of this BMP. You know, except the engine, obviously. Oh man, we're so close. We are so close, and then we get to shoot stuff. Ah! Oh crap, here we go, we have to do the, uh, the torque system, or the traction system. This is where we get to see those torsion things I was talking about when I was describing all of the transmission and stuff, that I had no idea what that was. Actually, if anybody has extra knowledge about the BMP that they would like to share, be sure to list that in the comments below, because I am trying to research and get as much information as I can from, you know, Wikipedia and my friends and stuff, but there's always going to be something that somebody knows more than I do. Or maybe I've said something that's wrong, and you should correct me. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to pretend that I know everything there is to know about the BMP3, or that I might be wrong a couple times, so be sure to let me know. I also really kind of want to play the BMP3 again in Project Reality, because this thing wrecks in Project Reality. It destroys. I mean, it can't take much punishment, but it will one-shot an Abrams easy with the anti-tank missile. It's insane. Alright, here we go. Torsion! Taking out the torsion, those little torsion-y things, I have no idea what they do. But, this should be the last step. I'm pretty sure we're almost there. 34 parts left. 34! 33! 32! 28! 27! 26! Keep going! I am not going to reassemble this either. That would be a nightmare. If somebody actually does it, you have my respect. Because doing this without the guidance for all these pieces would be insanity. Oh god, and there's torsion arms. Oh, come on! Come on! I want to shoot stuff! All right, it's okay. Nine parts left. We got this. Uh, only 
three left. Two. Uh, one. Yeah! And there it is. Oh my gosh. There is the BMP3 completely deconstructed. Ah. I actually kind of want to look at this thing just a little bit. I want to look at it all hollowed out. It's very cool. You could, like, live in here if you're a homeless person. I wonder if they just have, like, BMP3 wrecks lying around anywhere in, like, a BMP3 graveyard. You just live in it. Put a little tent on the top. Be great. Ah, the more I look at this, though, the more it makes me want to have these kind of details in actual armor games, like Arma. Ah, that'd be amazing. Ah, well. Okay. All right, we're going to move on, and we're going to finally shoot some stuff. Let's do it! I am pumped. So here we go. Here is the BMP completely reconstructed, ready to go, ready to fire. I'm going to hit the cutaway here so we can see all the internals. Oh, and you can see all the guys in there. That is really cool. It looks like we have a set of objectives on the left side, so we're going to have to do all of those different things and see how they work. So let's get right to it. We're going to fire off some rounds and see how it looks. So there's the engine going. You can have it in x-ray and see it working in the back there. You can also, oh, you can see all of the combat module, all the different ammunition loaded up. That's really cool. You can see, like we were talking about earlier, that's the conveyor system at the bottom, and you can see all the rounds set up in the conveyor system. And as the rounds are fired, it rotates and loads it back into the cannon. Hopefully we'll see all of those animations. The details in this are really, really cool. Oh, I love that it shows all the people inside the vehicle. Man, ah, I want to see this in a game. I want to see this in Project Reality. How cool would this be? So I think you have to turn off the engine in order to do anything else. So let's do that really quick. And there we go. Now we are firing. Let's zoom in and get a really good look on that. And you can see right there the automatic conveyor system loading the ammunition into the 30 Mike Mike auto cannon. Everything in this BMP, all the firing systems are fully automated, and I can't imagine how much easier that makes the life for the gunner and the commander. So you can see right to the left of the auto cannon, that is where the shells are ejected. So it loads the rounds with the conveyor, fires, and then ejects right through that front port, right to the left. Let's turn on the rangefinder here, see what that looks like. Oh, it's just, <laughs> just a big red laser. I uh, technically shouldn't be able to see that because it's infrared, but you know, whatever. Turn on the lights, and that's pretty. Now we're going to open the hatches and see how that looks. Oh, whoops, had it on slow motion. And there's the swimming mode activated. It puts that out in front so the water doesn't pour over into all those hatches. Let's turn that back. Please. Get out of x-ray mode. Oh, come on. Let me out! Let me out! Oh, there we go. Oh, no, come on. Oh, that's good enough. I'll look at it this way. There's the coaxial machine gun on the left side right there firing. There we go. Back to normal mode. Get the cutaway going. Love the cutaway. And I guess it doesn't show the belt feed for the PKT. Uh, not entirely sure where that comes from. It doesn't look like it's connected to anything. They may not have modeled that. Oh wow, <laughs> and there's all the uh, infantry firing out of the ports on the side, which is really cool. That gives the BMP complete 360 degree coverage if you use those ports with infantry. And there's the smoke firing that just puts down smoke cover to protect the infantry and the BMP from visual sighting. Doesn't really protect from thermals, but if you're not finding anybody with thermals, it doesn't really matter. And we can turn on the IR projectors here. Now this is actually interesting because you wouldn't actually see this in real life. It's infrared. It's beyond what you can see. You would actually see it if you filmed it with a camera because a camera is sensitive to that. In the same way that, you know, when you take a picture of like a remote control or something, it sees the, the little red dot. Uh, but that's mainly used for infrared illumination, which isn't in the frequency of light that the eye can see. And here we're going to fire off a minute. Oh, damn, that's awesome! Haha! <laughs> It even ejects the little missile shell out of the back. That's interesting. So let's get a close-up on the automatic conveyor and loading system. So the gun actually has to tilt back in order to load a missile as opposed to a normal shell. That is interesting. So that's pretty cool. Let's open up the back doors here and see how that looks. That's pretty cool. If you open up both the top and the back doors, then it's actually pretty roomy, pretty easy to get out. Uh, that's, that's really interesting. Now we're going to convert to low rider BMP. Put some some trap music on or something. Go cruising around the streets, blaring blaring that stuff. 
got our badass BMP hydraulic system. Go to all the parties, man. Let's see, we're gonna elevate this thing and... Hey, what does that look like? Oh, this is interesting. It looks like there's something moving in there. So you can actually see... Well, let's get a close-up on that. Oh, that's that's cool. Well, you see it? You got the little wheel there. And he turns. See, does the gunner do anything? Or commander? No? Alright, I guess it's the gunner. Yes, yeah, so the gunner has his little control thing there that he moves. That's pretty sick. And I guess that just fires the 30 millimeter again. Probably the, the different ammo type. Not much of a difference. Oh, I see. It's a high rate or a low rate. That makes sense. Okay, so now we can make the turret turn. This is going to be cool. I want to see this. Get it to turn all the way to the left now. That is so damn awesome. Okay, time for the big party. Shoot some main rounds, yeah! Now these are the 100 millimeter rounds. They are on that conveyor all the way to the bottom. Um, they're set up so that revolves and then the elevator elevates the round to the gun, loads it and fires, as you can see all here. That is so cool. It's almost like a magazine down there. It's like the, the, the drum magazine on the Russian machine gun, for those of you who play Red Orchestra. Kind of a similar setup. Or, well, <laughs> without the automated lifter and loader, but the, the conveyor's kind of similar, the thing at the bottom that rotates. And you can see in the back there, you have the reserve ammunition that you can load by hand. It's not actually in the conveyor, it's not actually active in the automated loader system, but it's reserve ammunition if you run out. So this is very cool. I'm gonna fire off all this ammunition, and then we are going to reload this whole thing. So let's just do that. So here we go, last two rounds, let's do it! All right, I guess that was the last one, so it was one round, not two. Let's reload this, get all the rounds in here, and see how that goes. That's awesome, so you can see that it opened up the back, and you bring the round in, you set it in the conveyor, and then it automatically loads up, and you just go through the entire thing until every slot is full, and then you have a completely reloaded BMP-3. That's very, very cool. I'm enjoying this. Man, I want to, I want to do this in an actual game! How cool would it be if you take your you take your tank back to your main base and then you have to load in all the ammunition in the right way? How sick would that be? So yeah, once this is pretty much loaded, that's that's it. That's all we have left. Uh, I guess we can look at a couple color schemes. Let's do that really quick. But yeah, that's that's everything. That is the BMP3 and World of Guns completely disassembled all the way down. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys liked the video, be sure to share and subscribe. That helps out more than you know. And if you want to see some more disassemblies from World of Guns, tell me in the comments what you'd like to see, and we'll be sure to do it soon. So, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll be sure to see you on the battlefield very soon. Love you!